Well, it does have so many connections. I think the, the key word is that we can just let people know it's a companion piece. And it's not so much a spin-off, but it's two separate worlds. That's kind of my biggest thing, is I do worry. That, and I do, you know, the other thing I worry about, which is just me being insecure and paranoid, is that people will soon start the show and compare it to the beginning of the third season of Vampire Diaries, which is going a mile a minute. <laughs> Whereas if you go back to the first season of Vampire Diaries, you'll remember it. It told a story. And it, it, it took a while to sort of suck you in. And then... And that's what we're trying to do here. And, and, and it does have, I wouldn't say there's a slow pace, but we, we spend time getting to our characters and dealing with the relationships and understanding what they want and what they desire and what witchcraft is. And then right around the time you think it's this, then this happens and the whole world turns upside down. It's, you know, it's another fun show. Well, you know, it, it really, you know it, it, if, if it works, yes. It's one of those things where, like you said it best, if it works, do it if it doesn't no and I think that's what's going to happen here is is, is we're going to start to um, um, we're going to try but I think when you when you take a series of books and you have to redesign them for a TV suddenly you're I change this and this, and then I get, then I add to it because I get an idea. And I go, what about this? Or what about this? And you know, it's like I'm a writer. I don't want to just like translate. Yeah. I want. It's like the whole reason you hire me is for me to bring whatever's going on in here, and I in here, and I try to do it. And I just, I want. It's no fun for me. I can't personalize it. I have to personalize it, like I do with Vampire Diaries. I have to personalize it so that I can cry over it. And so Julie and I sit there and cry as we write. <laughs> and you know, this is the same thing. The way it is, the way it works is Vampire Diaries comes first. And the Secret Circle is a show, because that's, that's my bread and butter in terms of my baby. It's the one I, I still cry over. And so, Secret Circle has been designed to be run by Andrew Miller. And he's the guy who was there before I ever showed up. He's the guy who's there now. And I just check in with him, I help him, I go in the writer's room, and I play. And then I leave. And I go back to Vampire. I, th I think, you know what there is, I think there should be a moral compass, and what I really love about making um, characters is, is I, I want my heroes to be flawed, and I want my my villains to be understood, whether you agree to agree with them or not, you understand why they're doing what they're doing, and you can, and you can almost empathize with them, or you can sympathize with them, or you can have some sort of compassion for them. And that to me always works the best, you know, it's like, I feel like in Vampire Prince, Uncle John was such a hated character, but I knew if I could just do it right, I could turn, I could make you at least by the time he died, you would go, yeah, you know, a lot of that's going to happen with this, you're going to understand Natasha Dantridge, you're going to see her be a wonderful mother, you're going to see her be a great principal, you're going to see her be a wonderful, and same, he's a lawyer. And he's the outstanding person in this town. He loves his daughter. He loves her more than anything. The thing that's hard for me is I want witchcraft because I, I, you know, the witchcraft in, in Vampire Diaries has been so like you know, Bonnie's always been on this sort of learning, learning curve. I know I'm a witch, but how do I do it? Here you have witches. It's a whole. There's several. I want it to be scary. So to me, that's always the challenge. You know, it's like, how do you make which guy scary? How, you know, and then when you really start digging into it, and you look into like the occult, Rosemary's Baby, Devil Worship, Voodoo, and all that Haitian, like creepy Voodoo stuff. I mean, it's really scary. But if you take that and you get your own, and then call it the Witchcraft of the Secret Circle, you've got a really scary, scary sort of rich Bible of, uh, of, of evil. And at the same time, you have a good. We'll, we'll, we're, trying, we're doing everything. You know, we've got real, the, we, we've got the Wiccan Skateboard Bible. We've got, like, we've got all sorts of really sort of interesting, there's so many different types, but we're sort of like designing it to be our own fit, to what works for us. Because I did a movie, like, I produced this film, a little scene film for a good reason, called Venom. And it's, I wouldn't encourage anyone to go read it, however. <laughs> but but it, it's, I went down to Louisiana to film it, and I got deep into voodoo. And that, you know, the milking ceremonies with snakes, and it was just creepy. <laughs> All get out. And I think if we could just take some of that and flavor it in a way, which is Wiccan or, or, or sort of like an evil Wiccan witchcraft or something just really taboo. And I don't know, I think, I think there's a way to make witchcraft really super scary as well as it is magical and lovely and fun and amazing. Because there's all those storylines too. So I feel like you get to do both. It's in which, if you do it right, it can be epic, be good news.
life unexpected got canceled <laughs> is, is, is what happened because you know Britt is someone who I've known because I know Liz Tegeler really well and I've always been watching her show and I was sort of had my eye on her and then when we were casting Scream 4 I remember going yo Wes this girl she's on Life Unexpected so they brought her in and they were really considering her for a bigger role and her Life Unexpected schedule wouldn't let that happen so she had to like all she you know she did have was, I think she had a little new piece and and but when this came around, I was like, oh, this is a good conversation. But then I heard that the network had somebody else in They had their own person in mind, and it, they, they were totally like this. It turned out when I said, who is it? They got Robertson. She was on a show of ours. I didn't know. I'm like, hey, that's what I'm talking about. I, was, I thought there was going to be a problem. And you always say, but everyone's been on the same page. And then when I found Thomas Tepper was available, I went to, um, you know, Warner Brothers. I had to work with him on John Connor and Sarah, uh, Sarah Connor. And um, they loved it. And so it was a matter of just having the audition. He was 